Okay, now that we've seen the principle of the config view in action where we can change uh, the, uh, the views that are used in our simulations just using this handy text file rather than having to kind of uh, manipulate things manually, uh, let's go and see if we can figure out how to use it in a larger context. So I'm going to uh, go from ADE Explorer into what's called ADE Assembler by clicking on the up button right here. Uh, conversely, I could also go to launch ADE Assembler. Um, but if I just click here, it should go up into the Assembler. Now, if I right click on global parameters, global variables, sorry, uh, I can go uh, to add a config sweep. And I'm going to go to my cell name, class A, P, A, M, N, W, the matching network cell, because I have a bunch of views there uh, that correspond to the different simulations that I might want to run. I'm going to set schematic, schematic import, and schematic PZ here. And I'm going to click OK. And if we look now, it will have created a variable that's going to try and do a sweep of schematic, schematic uh, import, and schematic PZ. Now these correspond to the schematic view, the S parameter simulation view uh, of the schematic uh, from EMX, and the PZ model based view uh, from EMX. All right, so I'm going to enable that variable, and we are going to go ahead and run this. Now this is the time to point out that we can run more than one job at a time uh, if we have a computer that's capable of that. So if we go to Options, Job Setup, uh, we can change the max job to some number uh, higher than one. And theoretically, that will allow the job to be distributed to uh, or multiple jobs to be distributed to multiple machines at the same time. All right, so you can see that it managed to run two of the three of these. Uh, it managed the, to run the schematic view here and the model view here, but it did not manage to run the uh, import. And uh, we'll go and check out the log in just a moment to see what's going on there. Now, uh, immediately though, we can see a couple of things. One, the schematic view told us that we had a drain efficiency of 16% uh, and the PZ model-based view is telling us that we have a drain efficiency of 13.7%. Uh, so indeed, having that, having the parasitics, the additional parasitics in the layout has affected things. Now we can see if we can recover that in some way. So perhaps we just need to modify the load line uh, a little bit in order to recover this, uh, or perhaps this is just due to additional parasitic loss. We have to go through and, and evaluate our layout to see what might be causing that. Uh, we can see immediately also that the output power uh, is 72 milliwatts uh, in the schematic base view, and it's only 55 milliwatts in the PZ model based view. So that tells us immediately that, uh, that it's probably uh, got something to do with load line and some additional insertion loss that we're going to have to, to modify. All right, let's figure out what went wrong with the import schematic uh, simulation. All right, so I'm going to open the log and we'll see if we can find an error. All right, the error is that it can't find the S parameter file. Oh, I know why this is. Uh, this is simply because uh, when I ran this, I ran the uh, S parameter simulation on one of our high performance computing clusters here, and I didn't move the S parameter file over uh, to the appropriate location, so it cannot find it. Uh, so once I move that over, uh, it will be available. Uh, I'll do that right now. All right, it is available. Uh, I thought I had done, I did do an rsync uh, on the data from the one server to the other server. Uh, so it just turns out that I'm just pointing, uh, that I, I didn't uh, modify the cell view so that it points to the right path. So 
So uh, where I look for this is in the schematic import view. We check the properties, and this will have it have the uh, S parameter data file pointing to uh, some path. We need to make sure that that path is the uh, correct uh, path. Uh, so I've done that. Click save. All right, well, as you can see, uh, we did replace the S parameter file with the correct file uh, uh, in that uh, schematic uh, underscore import. And you can see now that the simulation of running that particular view also worked. Now you can see that you get similar results in the schematic underscore import to the schematic underscore PZ. Uh, this makes sense because really these things are based upon one another. The PZ model is trying to fit, is a circuit model that's trying to be fit to the data from the uh, import model. Now this also highlights that we do indeed have some type of redesign or correction to do uh, to fix the layout for the parasitics that we added. Let's take a look and see what we might be able to do. All right, so we're gonna go back up and open the layout view. All right, so when we added the two inductors and the capacitors, in order to interconnect the inductors, we had to add this long strip of metal. Now we could have perhaps chosen an, a more optimal geometry for the inductors uh, for instance, uh, something that allowed the turns to be uh, shortened, or we could possibly have rotated the inductors to get their inputs a little bit closer together. Uh, but let's presume that the layout had to look something like this. Uh, if we go in and take a look at this uh, metal that we've added, uh, we can see uh, that the metal uh, is on the order of uh, let's see, the endpoint is 100, uh, 294 here, so just on the order of 200 microns. Uh, we could also take a ruler and measure that and show, yeah, so it's about 193.7 microns. Now, in general, you get about one nanohenry per millimeter of wiring, uh, with, and, and that really doesn't matter much what the metal looks like. That's just a general rule of thumb that works. Uh, and so ultimately this wire is in series with this inductance. So maybe if we were to figure out a way to reduce this inductance by a factor of, uh, of about 200 uh, picohenries, we might be able to uh, correct the situation. So what we're gonna do in our particular case is try and, and, and shorten this loop uh, somehow. Now there's gonna be a bit of iteration on this because as we shorten the loop, it's going to uh, affect where the, uh, the, the port comes out on the inductor, which is gonna shorten this piece of metal. But overall, what we wanna do is find a way to take out about 200 picohenries uh, from uh, this uh, loop. Uh, and if we do that, we should uh, be able to solve our problem. Now, I'm not going to do that uh, this time around. Uh, it's something that you might be able to do uh, if you come up with a, a situation where you have a layout like this in the future. It's just something, some example of what we can do. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to focus on laying out the power transistors uh, just to see what it looks like to lay out an active cell. And, and, and then shortly after that, I'll put everything together uh, and do a top-level layout.